Layers clouds are often lens-like cap clouds that form above rapidly rising thunderstorm updrafts. This is what we're going to call a classic Peleus. But they can also form over smaller clouds, uh, or possibly even above dry updrafts, but I have not seen or heard of that. Peleus are a type of lenticular cloud in the sense that they often form a lens-like shape, but they differ from lenticulars in that they form due to cloud-induced updrafts rather than from the movement of air over mountains. Because classic Peleus clouds form over a rapidly rising updraft, they tend to change appearance rapidly. So if you want to see one, you've got to keep your eyes peeled at the right time. What looks stationary to our eyes can in fact be gone in seconds. This is another difference with mountain lenticulars, which can sometimes last for hours as air continually rises over the mountain to form the cloud in the same place. But the question we're asking in this video is, can we predict these Peleus clouds in advance? So now for such a small scale and short-lived cloud, you might think that this would be a very difficult task, and it is. However, it is possible in certain situations and places. It can even be sort of easy. First of all, let's look at the cloud like a delicious food dish, in that we need to know the ingredients needed to cook up the cloud. A cloud-free layer that is moist enough such that a moderate amount of lifting will be enough to cool the layer to its point of condensation is one of the ingredients. That layer should also be relatively stable. This will allow it to better form a lens shape because if it's thermally unstable, the layer may instead just puff up like a cumulus as part of the larger updraft. And finally, we need that updraft and preferably a very vigorous one. So we have an idea about our ingredients for our Peleus dish. So how are we going to find out when these ingredients are going to occur together so that we can actually predict the cloud? Well, this is where things become a little bit tricky. Uh, let's look at the example of Darwin, Australia, a hotbed for Peleus clouds. We have to turn to our old friend, the hideously complicated skew T diagram. More background on this is in some other videos on this channel, such as the predict what a thunderstorm will look like video and the three wind layers in a thunderstorm time-lapse video. Briefly though, the skew T shows the temperature measured as you go up through the atmosphere and the dew point temperature, which is the temperature you would have to cool the air to in order to get a cloud. In other words, at any of these layers, if you could cool it to the dew point temperature, you would get condensation and form a cloud. In the case of a Peleus cloud, the cooling to get the Peleus cloud comes from lifting, because as you lift the air, the pressure drops, which reduces the temperature. The pressure drops basically because there is less air above it weighing it down, and so less of it to put pressure on it. Right, so we want a layer in the atmosphere where it is moist enough that the lifting from a thunderstorm updraft will cool the layer to its dew point temperature and form a cloud. So the next ingredient is that great powerful thunderstorm updraft. How are we going to figure that out? Well, the thunderstorm updraft is driven primarily by convective energy, and there is an infamous meteorological quantity to find this out, known as the CAPE. CAPE stands for the Convective Available Potential Energy. And again, I refer you to some earlier videos for more uh, sort of dodgy detail on CAPE. The SCUTI diagram reveals the CAPE by plotting the hypothetical temperature of a dollop of air rising up from the near surface. So in this case, then, that dollop of air will continue to rise because it is more buoyant than the air around it. So through this whole layer, air in a thunderstorm updraft would be expected to rise, punching through the air around it, including those layers that are close enough to their dew point temperature that strong lifting will be enough to cool them to their condensation and perhaps form a Peleus cloud. 
So we need these skew-t diagrams to make our prediction. So how can we get them? Well, they come from weather balloons that are launched on a 12-hourly universal standard time, known as UTC, schedule at many locations around the world. Specifically, they are launched at 00 UTC and 12 UTC. So, yes, every 12 hours. For our Darwin example, we have to add nine and a half hours to get the local time. The best thunderstorms for seeing Peleus clouds and at many other areas in the tropics are in the afternoon when the convective energy is high because the heating of the land by the sun has uh, reached its peak. For Darwin, the sounding we have to look at for predictive purposes is the 00 UTC sounding, which is a bit early, uh, but the 12 UTC sounding is at 9.30 p.m., so that's too late. 00 UTC sounding actually appears online a bit later because the balloon needs to first rise up through the atmosphere and then the data needs to be processed and uploaded. I think it comes uh, online between 10 and 11 a.m. I uh, can't remember exactly. The place to get the diagram is found with a simple search for Wyoming soundings. For some reason that I do not know, the University of Wyoming is responsible for producing these essential plots. Whatever the reason, I'm grateful to them because for a weather nerd, this is essential information. <laughs> Another source of sounding information are weather models. Some smart organizations and individuals allow you to plot model forecast soundings just by clicking on a model image. The example here is from the Brisbane Storm Chasers site. These being the result of simulations, they're less detailed and of course less accurate as they are not representative directly of reality. However, the advantages are that they're available at more times and at anywhere covered by the model forecast. The thing is that High Cape does not guarantee a thunderstorm at all. And the prediction of thunderstorms is complicated. But there is a bit of a rough shortcut, and it is again from the models. If you see an area where Cape is very high, check the forecast for afternoon rainfall. If you see blobby-like rain and there is high Cape, it's pretty likely that the model is predicting thunderstorms. While complicated, thunderstorms occur where there is lifting in the lower troposphere. When air clashes together, it is forced upwards, which can trigger a thunderstorm. For our Darwin cases, this happens very frequently at, by the sea breeze that develops during the morning and spreads inland from the coast. By afternoon, the sea breeze may be moving into some very energy-rich air that has built up in the heat. Being cooler, the air from the sea is more dense and lifts the warm air ahead of it, potentially triggering a thunderstorm. In addition, along irregular coastlines and over islands, the sea breezes can come from different directions and collide, creating even stronger lift. This can create some extremely reliable thunderstorms, such as the one here known as Hector the Convector, over the Tiwi Islands, north of Darwin, as discussed in an increasing number of videos here. So in this case, if you have some moist layers in the middle of an upper troposphere revealed by the skew t sounding diagram and you have high cape but fairly clear skies you can simply go down to a place with a view of the tiwi islands around lunchtime and sit and wait to see a strong updraft over the islands in fact it is the strongest updrafts that produce the most dramatic peleus clouds it seems, because they are punching air upwards with the most force. So often, if you spot a Peleus cloud above a growing cumulus, it can be a sign that the cloud will soon become a powerful thunderstorm updraft. So anyway, uh, there are some ideas to get you started on Peleus cloud prediction. The predict topic is a bit incomplete and imprecise, and there are many more technical things you could say to estimate the strength of the updraft, and you can certainly make a guess about the amount of lifting needed to get the condensation. This actually requires a use of a method called Norman's construction, which I may go over in a, another video, or you can just Google it. Right, so that is what I have for the moment for version 1.0 of this predict topic. If you have any suggestions for version 1.1, please leave a comment, or just leave a comment to say hi. 
and thanks for watching.